Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, misery money. Investigators claim that top officials in South Sudan have been profiting off years of conflict that have devastated the country. Our correspondent hears from actor George Clooney, who helped commission the damning report. Also in Gabon, there are calls for an international investigation into the military's response to rioting that followed the re-election of President Ali Bongo. The days of unrest have left a tense shadow over cities across the country. And as Muslims across the continent celebrate Eid al-Adha, we take a look at how one of the most important festivals in the Islamic religious calendar is getting underway in Gabon, Senegal and Niger. But first, a new report accuses top officials behind South Sudan civil war of getting rich off the conflict that's devastated the country ever since December 2013. Tens of thousands have died since fighting first broke out between soldiers backing President Salva Kiir and those supporting his former number two, Riek Machar. Investigators claim that, across the board, corruption has undermined accountability for rights violations. Gallagher Fenwick has spoken to actor and activist George Clooney, who has co-funded the probe. The means deployed and used by the Sentry project are impressive uh, satellite internet technologies in order to identify the uh, sources of uh, finances going into South uh, Sudan and financing the brutal civil war out there between rivals President Salva Kiir uh, and his former uh, Vice President Rick Machar. The uh, project uh, uh, is being uh, carried by a set of personalities, uh, one of them of course the Amer American actor uh, George Clooney, who long focused uh, his attention on the president of Sudan uh, in the north, Omar al-Bashir, but now recognizes that mistakes were made in supporting some of those who are now active on the ground in South Sudan. South Sudan wasn't our initial target. We were going after uh, Bashir. I mean, that was the initial thing was we were going to say, well, if we can't do it with satellite imagery and with all the other versions of things we've tried, then let's try uh, going after his money, going after their money. What happened along the way was uh, um, uh, South Sudan started blowing up and we had to we had to take an honest and hard look at the people who were involved, including people that we know. And we had to say, in, in, in fairness, this is what's going on. This is these are the facts and present the facts uh, to the public and hope that that'll, uh, that'll help uh, move the needle. For the moment, following this presentation, there will be no concrete repercussions on the ground in South Sudan. However, the American actor George Clooney says he will be presenting his findings to U.S. President Barack Obama and members of his administration in the hopes that they act, and quickly so. Gabonese rights groups are calling for an international inquiry into alleged military crackdowns on rioting that followed President Ali Bongo's re-election. Opposition leader Jean Ping's camp claims that dozens were killed. The government puts the number at just three. Bongo scrapped, scraped a win with just 6,000 votes on August 31st. Ping has since challenged the results before the Constitutional Court. Meanwhile, cities across the country bear the scars of the unrest. The remains of burned out cars alongside the town hall of Port Gentil's third district, a district governed by President Ali Bongo's Gabonese Democratic Party. The building was one of the targets attacked in post-election violence in the city, which overall is an opposition stronghold. For the past two weeks, the governor of the province has been trying to make people here feel more secure amidst the tensions. He's on his way to inspect a local market that's recently been torched. Here, there's not much left of the stalls, mostly owned by foreign traders who've now lost everything. Extensive material damage, but officially no deaths were recorded during the riots. We're sad to see here in Port Gentil that there have been injuries among the rioters and the police. In terms of deaths, Port Gentil has not recorded any dead. But there's a rumor going around that several people were indeed killed. That's yet to be confirmed by independent observers. Elsewhere, things are slowly returning to normal. And that's a relief for this Lebanese shopkeeper at the Grand Market Village. 
remembers the violent unrest in 2009. In 2009, there was lots of damage, but this time was quiet. You can see Grand Village hasn't even been touched. Everything is normal. The streets are full of people. There are even traffic jams. A few kilometers further away lies Ocean. It was the scene of post-election clashes between demonstrators and security forces. Since the riots, a tenuous calm prevails in this opposition stronghold. The people here are fed up. You can walk the whole neighborhood and not see any public water fountains, any health facilities. There's nothing here. Across Gabon, a tense wait remains for those hoping for a return of stability with the Constitutional Court's verdict on the opposition's challenge to Ali Bongo's re-election. In South Africa, the search continues for illegal miners stuck underground. One more man was rescued from the country's oldest gold mine on Monday night after he and others became trapped last Wednesday. At least eight have emerged from Langlate since Sunday, and survivors believe over a dozen may still be down there. Some may not have made it. A fire broke out inside a shaft over the weekend, and coupled with deadly levels of carbon monoxide, rescuers have found it hard going reaching the remaining men. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, opponent of President Joseph Kabila walked out of talks aimed at avoiding a political crisis. Critics of Kabila are concerned that he's trying to force a postponement of this year's presidential polls so that he can maneuver an extension when his term runs out in December. Suspicions are high and negotiations already delicate. Thomas Nicolon has more. Everybody knew that opening talks in DR Congo between the government and the opposition wouldn't be an easy thing, but everything was going fine until today uh, when the opposition decided to walk out of talks for one reason, because they want the absolute certainty that the presidential election will be held before the local elections. If we were to start by holding local elections in a country where there are fictional localities, then the presidential poll would be held in 2021. We're not credulous fools. We said no because it would worsen the country's political crisis. We believe that our friends in the government understood that we're not being hypocritical, but they still wanted to take us by surprise. But we're not little children. We're going to respect the Constitution, its spirits and its words. It is an important aspect for the opposition because they already accepted the fact that the presidential election will probably be postponed in DR Congo. Now, the government is not really worried about the opposition walking out of talks because they believe it is just a negotiating tactic. And the government delegation spokesman, Leonard Che Okitundu, said that the African Union mediator, Edem Kojo, will now have to do what he was actually sent here to do, which is facilitate, mediate and gather people together so that the dialogue could resume as soon as possible between government and opposition. Thomas Nicolas there for us in Kinshasa. Well, Eid al-Adha was celebrated by Muslims across Africa on Monday. A feast is held to commemorate the scriptural story of Abraham, who was about to sacrifice his son until God gave him a ram to slay in its, his place. Nicolas Schumel takes a look now at how the key religious festival was marked in some countries on the continent. Security was tight at the entrance of Libreville's main mosque. President Ali Bongo came to pray here in the midst of a political crisis. The announcement of his victory in last month's presidential election sparked violent protests. The opposition has challenged the results in the constitutional court. Today we pray for peace. Peace is the most important thing. I prayed for peace. Because of the tensions, fewer people came to the mosque this year. <laughs> We're happy to celebrate Eid despite the violent context. We trust God, we pray for our country. Like Ali Bongo, Niger's president Mohamedou Issoufou also took part in the prayer to mark Eid. The imam rejected jihadist group Boko Haram, which has carried out attacks on Niger's soil. The interior minister said the threat was real. Everyone must be vigilant. If you see something suspicious, you must warn the security forces at once. The atmosphere was less tense in Dakar, where many Senegalese no longer use cash to pay for the Eid sheep. The money is transferred using mobile phones. 
When there's a major event like this one, it attracts pickpockets and thieves. So people prefer paying using the system on their mobile phones. They come here, choose a sheep and pay with their mobiles. The government said some 700,000 sheep were bought for the Muslim holy day. As there weren't enough in Senegal, some had to be imported from Mauritania and Mali. Well, that's it for Eye on Africa. Thanks for joining us and please do so again if you can. Take care. You love watching France 24 in English. Analysis from France 24. I'm Marco Inn. These are the main world news. To the border with Algeria. Huge lines since this morning to answer that question. But France 24 is also available in French. 14h à Paris, bonjour à tous. Bienvenue. Si vous nous revenez sur France 24, préparez-vous. And Arabic. Featured on cable and satellite systems and online media in France and across the world.